Well, you know, I, I, um, I got involved in college, believe it or not. Um, the only place I'd ever been to outside of the United States was Canada. <laughs> I can sing the whole national anthem still to this day. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I took a, um, I was a biochemistry major as an undergraduate and took a, a class in medical anthropology. And that had a big impact on me because uh, just the readings that were so different from what I'd been studying in my other classes. And we also had to do a, um, a, a research paper. I, I'm, I'm smiling self-mockingly, by the way. But I, um, I, I was at Duke University, and um, I did mine, uh, did some work in the emergency room. And so then, then you got to see uh, what it's like not to have a national health insurance plan. Because the in, in the United States, to this day, although perhaps less so, the emergency rooms are really the nexus of access for people living in poverty or without health insurance. Um, and uh, in North Carolina, uh, Duke was the de facto provider for a lot of um, people who had been shut out of uh, the sort of apartheid era uh, institutions. So I learned a lot um, just by just in the course of that one semester. And I knew by the end of it that uh, that's what I wanted to do. I want to be a physician anthropologist. Now, I also ended up going into infectious disease, but that was really Haiti uh, more than anything else. And by the time I uh, graduated from college, I mean, I, I wanted to go to Haiti. Uh, so, and then um, uh, that changed my life for the, for the better. So it all came out of that, actually. So it spiraled in the sense of one thing led to another, but I, I do think the social justice part was the, the key, the, the, the core of it for me. I mean, we're, I was talking with Christine about this on the way over here. You know, whether you do family practice or internal medicine or neurosurgery or nurse practitionering, you know, there's plenty of room for everybody, and we always need the social justice angle to prevent, um, you know, mean aspirations for poor people, basically. So that, is that, does that answer the question? Yeah, that's great. I would encourage everybody, I mean, many of you already, faculty already, Chose, made those choices, but for your students and trainees or your fellow residents in your case, you know, uh, push people to do something they'd really like to do for 30 years and then turn that to, to social justice. So, and, and, you know, find something you like. If I could have been a general surgeon, I would have been a general surgeon. I would be doing the same thing. Well, I mean, the main suggestion is, is um, you know, find uh, what the people of Silicon Valley call platforms. You know, find, find a group that you can work with that isn't moving in and out. Um, um, you know, if I go to Haiti, um, I can do, you know, five consults uh, and make a contribution and then leave because we have built a platform with a tertiary care hospital clinics, community health workers that, you know, goes from people's homes all the way to when they are critically ill or injured. Most of the um, work I do is really very subspecialist hospitalist work, mm -hmm. even though I'm much more interested in community health. Yeah. But, uh, you know, like I'm just going back to the advice I just gave to you. You know, I do what I, I chose the kind of medicine I like to do, which happens to be people who have multiple diagnoses and an infectious disease. Mm -hmm. And, and work with, um, you know, community health workers, nurses, surgery teams, et cetera, et cetera. So short-term medical missions, which is what you're talking about, they, they, they deserve a bad rap if they're not linked to something ongoing. But if they're linked to something ongoing, I mean, anybody who lives in two places can have a very meaningful, satisfying, um, morally satisfying uh, engagement with um, the health problems of people living in poverty. And um, so I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, that's the, the first point I make. The second is, you know, for, um, for people who are chairmen of departments or deans or running health centers, hospitals, we really need the leadership to be um, committed to this, um, the this being global health equity. And it, it, it's, it, it will happen, and, and that's why I mentioned the, the residency program at the Brigham. 
is because we want it to be easier for them and to, to be able to do this long term over some decades. And the this may involve, I was lucky that I got to spend a lot of time in one place. Um, but I, I regard it as that, as lucky, not, not easy for everybody to do. Um, and uh, I'd like to make it you know, easier for um, our colleagues and trainees to have meaningful experiences that are, that are shorter as well. Well, you know, sustainability can be used as a weapon against poor people, and, I, and that's, what I've, that's how I was introduced to it. Not in the um, pleasant way of Canada, you know. Um, it sounds good, sustainability. I, I've, I, I've just started to begin my Canada mocking. Yeah. You know, I do it every time I come here. <laughs> I can also say it's my favorite country. All right. But, you know, the way the, way the term is thrown around so blithely, um, it's a, like a diagnostic test, sustainable, not sustainable. So I, I think it's a trap notion. It's better to talk, better to uh, think about sustaining something, right? Instead of saying, is this sustainable or is it not? Say, how do we sustain it? I mean, if you're convinced it's a good thing. So the, you know, we say we're living in a time of uh, limited resources. I, I, would, I try to immediately add, yes, but they're less limited now than at any other time in human history. Love, Paul. So, am I supposed to be really formal here, by the way? <laughs> so, you, you know, um, I, I, I think sustainability is, a, is the way it's used in, uh, in development parlance uh, um, is a trap. It's, it's, um, it, we should be saying, okay, how do we sustain things that we know to be good? Um, you know, be, look at how um, the sustainability arguments have been used to erode support for universal health care in the United States not sustainable. Then you have to point out, well, it just happens to be more sustainable than what we've got now. And, um, and I've just seen that again and again in settings of poverty. Um, in the 80s, um, the idea was that health care and health systems were competing with education, um, economic growth, and that was a very bad model for poor people, right? Now at least we say that health care and education promote economic development, but y you know anybody who has a, um, is as old as I am or as interested in reading about it will see that those concepts were used to limit investments in health and education for poor people. Um, so I, I would just be mindful of it. Um, you know, the, um, I'm going to Van Vancouver from here, and um, in 1996, the, the AIDS meetings were in Vancouver, and I actually came from Haiti directly to Vancouver, just like coming to Calgary. A lot of flights, long way. And uh, that was the year when, I mean, the infectious disease people already knew that um, antiretroviral therapy was going to change everything. But that was the year that everybody knew. Um, and the, the theme was one world, one hope. Who the protesters were, but they were, they were from Africa, somewhere in sub-Saharan Africa. and. Um, they had a banner that said, one world, no hope. Because they were being told that ART in their countries wasn't sustainable, right? It wasn't a priority. It wasn't in the minimum basic package, et cetera, et cetera. And that went on from 1996 until 2002 when, of all people, George Bush launched PEPFAR. And that changed. And then, then the sustainability arguments became the ones that we want to have. How do we sustain this? How do we drop the prices of the drugs, the diagnostics? How do we build the staff, stuff, space, and systems to make that last? And here we are now, almost 15 years later, it's 14, 15 million people on therapy who are not paying for it. It's a public good for public health, just like Canada. So, <laughs> you know, I, I think being aware as, a, as someone who's about to start residency of the way these, you know, highfalutin and lofty sounding ideas can be used as a weapon against poor people is well worth, you know, spending time on, even as a busy resident, because it'll come up again and again. And I could give a lot of examples, I won't go on and on, of, of again, lofty sounding ideas that end up not being linked to social justice, which will always say, how do we st sustain this for them, you know, for, for people who are shut out of moder modernity?